Dave here, how are you? Today is the 10th of March, 2019. Man, oh man, it's nearly a quarter of the year gone. Um, we're 10 days into autumn, and I've noticed outside the trees are starting to change their colors. The European trees I've got, that is. And it's going to look really pretty. Hopefully we'll get a very, very nice display this year. I trust everyone's had a good week and everyone's uh, feeling Good, relaxed, comfortable. Uh, I think that's about all I can waffle on with there. This week, again, another packed show. Uh, and I was just reading down the side here, there was a gentleman asking about a retrofit helical head of some sort for a machine that he's got. I can't be of any use to you, I don't know. But maybe someone else there who can read it, might, they might they might know what you what you're after and where you can get it. But that machine you quoted, I have never heard of it before. So I'm sorry, I can't help you. Let's have a look here. Okay, putting the casting resin through the thickness. And now this is going to be fun. Now I have cheated a little bit. I jumped in early and I put this side over the jointer. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've done with this. I did it with the jointer, then I put it through the belt sander and I've taken it down to 800 grit with the Festool gear. So you know, I think that I need to go up to around 4,000 for it to polish up on its own. But I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Uh, NBN delayed yet again. Now, I was talking to someone else on Facebook earlier this morning and he was saying, well, it's not such a big deal. And I said, well, for me, it is because every time I move around like this all over the joint, move my arms around, you're going to get pixelation because the speed of my upload while I'm standing still and the background is always as it is, the rendering through my computer, which is pretty powerful, and also through the upload on the, my internet connection, that's the, that's the weak link. That is why you're going to get that pixelation. I have 0.8 of a megabyte upload. Now, I need around 10 meg upload per second to be able to give you a really good TV experience. So I'm... As I say, it's been put back another three months. They're telling me September possibly. And I'll bet you when that gets closer, I'll go back another three months. But we'll see. We'll see. I, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm sorry about it. Okay. Let me see. What's the next thing? Next thing. Festool Source Stop is coming. Now, you're, you may be aware that you may, you may have no interest in this part. Tool Techniques, which is the parent company of Festool, purchased Source Stop. Now, I have a picture here. SawStop is a great product. I see them all the time. I've seen the results of people cutting and not cutting their finger. A little bit, nothing, you know, it all depends. But it's a whole lot better than if it didn't have SawStop. So let me have a quick look down here and I'll see if I can find the photo. There it is. Now, that is basically a SawStop unit straight into a Festool CMS kind of system. You'll notice that the insert plate is green instead of red and uh, the, the blade is a 254 millimeter diameter blade so that'll give you a 79 millimeter deep cut just like all of the other saw stops that they produce so this will be very interesting to monitor this as to what kind of dollars they're going to want for this thing uh, and whether or not it's going to go into direct competition against the rest of the saw stop machines that will be very very interesting interesting to follow so could be cool. We'll see what happens. Uh, the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. I like to bring you little news items like this. If you've got a news item, send it in to me at davestantonfans at gmail.com and I'll have a little bit of a look. Curious. Blade cleaning demo. Now I'm going to do a blade cleaning demo. Some of my blades have got some pitch on them. They've resin from cutting softwoods. Now a lot of people, um, a lot of people aren't concerned with that. They, they think that when their blade is getting dull, it's because it's dull. And sometimes it's not because it's dull. It might just need a clean. Okay, next thing, next thing. Workship, workshop sign competition. And you'll notice I have got Zoe's sign up here. My wife will be very happy. So will Zoe. That we've got this up here. Now, Ian Kerry has jumped in and he said, um, how about, Dave, we do some signs and let's see if I've got, I don't know if I've got another picture here or not. But I do have this one. I've got this one here. So Ian has said, how about everyone sends in photos of a workshop sign that they've got in the corner of their room or in their workshop? Now, this is mine. 
Ian's got a lovely sign as well, which says, you know, Grandpa's Workshop or Pa's Workshop, um, open 24 hours, uh, payment uh, a cuddle. <laughs> now, Ian fixed something for me. He's making me a rip chain and he's already finished making it for that little DeWalt saw. And in a future video or live stream, we're going to get out there with that rip chain and see how quickly it goes through the blood wood in comparison to the cross cut chain. And he said, no cuddles required, Dave. <laughs> I don't know. I reckon I might. <laughs> anyway, so Ian is going to offer this, which is the little moisture meter that I showed the other week on, uh, on, the, on the show. And uh, he's going to offer that up as the person who wins the competition. Now, how are we going to do this? The easiest way for me to do this is if you send in your sign to me, and I'll put the email link in the description box down below, so where it says show more, expand that. And my email address is down there in case you forget as I'm talking. And you send me a photo of your sign. Now I'm going to put all of those photos up next week on the show. And what I need you to do is to have a look at them all and vote. Now you can vote for your own if you want to, that's not a problem, but you vote for them. Now how you vote is I will set up a raffle copter competition and all you do is you can enter uh, once, you can enter every day for six days if you wish, a nomination for whose sign is best. I will go through and count them all at the end and that will be the winner. It's very very easy, it's not biased. And the winner will receive, for Australia only, this winner. You can send signs in from all around the world, that's fine. But Australia only um, will get one of these still moisture meters. And I think that's pretty generous of Ian to do that. And uh, let's have some fun. It'll be great to see all these. As I say, I'll throw them up and uh, I'll do a, 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 um, a slideshow of all the signs. And I'll put a number on it. So if you don't know the name of who it is, you can just say, I vote for number three or I vote for number 72. I hope we get 72 entries. That'd be cool. But uh, I think this is going to be fun. I'm not going to enter because everyone knows that I've got that sign there that Zoe made for me. And also I've already got a moisture meter, so I don't need two of them. Okay, that'll be great. Thank you very much, Ian, for, for offering that up as a suggestion for the show and also offering up a prize. If you've got a suggestion for the show, and I know a few of you are throwing them up, let me get back over to here so that we can see um, why we haven't got that. There we go. My wife will be saying, David, where's, where's the chat? Where's the chat? There it is, baby. <laughs> um, the joys of doing all of this on my own. All right, next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. Um, John Lafferty Inventions. He's made a couple of things and he sent them up to me and you'll be very, very interested to see these. He prints these things in one go. Um, it's amazing. So I'll get to that soon. Uh, support the channel through Patreon, which is fantastic. Uh, I have a few people joined last month, which is terrific. A buck, a couple of dollars, whatever you feel, it's great. Uh, it really does help me and motivates me to keep moving. All right, what are we going to do next? How about we do the... Um, saw blade cleaning and I'm going to show you how I look after how, or a jig that I made. We're going to make this little jig to help me do the saw blade cleaning. It's simple. Here we go. I'm going to switch over to the other camera. Uh, there it is. Okay. So you can see I'm set up at the saw table or yep at the table saw, saw table, whatever you want to call it. People call it saw stop or stop saw. Anyway, this is not a saw stop. This is a Carbotech saw. I haven't got a saw stop. All right, now I've got my blade all the way down. Now I do not have, I don't know if you can see me in this or not, I do not have um, a riving knife or anything on here at the moment. So I'm going to rise it up and you can see it. Now the reason being is I'm going to do a plunge cut, but it's, it's upside down obviously. I'm going to plunge up into this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bring, I've wound the blade all the way to the bottom of its travel and I'm going to count the rotations. I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm going to turn it around a little bit further. How's that? You might be able to see it better there. I'm going to have a look at the video myself. Yep, that'll get me, I hope. All right, so here I am down here. Now I've got the blade all the way down to the bottom of the travel. I've got, I'm holding on to the crank wheel down the bottom here, which is going to raise it. Now I'm going to count 
the rotations of the crank to lift it up and I'm going to stop around about a quarter of an inch from the top here. So that's one rotation, two, three, four, five, six. I think six rotations is going to be great. It's not coming through. This is going to be a cradle for the blade when I clean them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop it all the way down again. Remember that was six rotations on my saw. Next I'm going to make sure that I'm center, slide the table saw's fence across, lock it in position. Now this is a heavy, this is a heavy table saw fence, so I can do this easily. If you've got a lightweight saw, like a, a job site saw or the DeWalt job site saw, whoever, Makita, Festool, um, whoever's, you may want to clamp the other end down. Now I'm going to put this over there, making sure that I've got no, no nails in this. This is a bit of scrap pine. And I'm going to use my little click clamps on the back here to hold that in position. So it's got it. And I'm going to do it at the front as well. Got it. Now, that's pretty safe. I'm going to turn the saw on and I'm going to raise it up six turns. I'm going to hold onto the fence as well. Here I am. I'm going to... Should I or shouldn't I? Look, I really don't need to wear any... Um, protection for my eyes but I always like to wear protection for my ears and I can't find found them found them found them I will wear protection for my eyes it's not that it's not that important in this situation so I'm going to wear the eye muffs because George always looks after the show for us I'm going to try not to talk too loud while I'm wearing them okay so got the handsome look so I'm going to hold this down. I'm not going to put my hand over there at all, at all, at all. It's going to be back here. I'm going to turn the saw on. I'm going to raise it up. One turn. Two turns. Three turns. Four turns. Five turns. Six turns. I'm going to lower it all the way down. Turn it off. Now I always like to turn the saw off in, in between tasks. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to move the blade, the fence over another mil to a mil and a half. Because when we put the cleaning product on the blade in this support, the timber is going to swell. We don't want the blade to get stuck in there. So I'm going to turn the saw on again and I'm going to go another six turns. One, two, three, four, five, six, and down. And turn her off. My old saw's starting to rattle a bit, isn't it? Wait for it to stop. Takes a while. Take the earmuffs off so I stop talking too loud. Take the clamps off. There you go. That's what I've got. I've got a nice little channel there. I can sit that. Clean the blade, drop it in. Okay, I'm going back to the other camera now. Other one there and there and done. Okay, I'm back over here. Gonna have a quick read. Uh, yes, so exactly right. That's the job site saw. So just be careful with that. Um, you'll know on the on the side how what we Look, let's say that this blade is the handle on the job site saw, okay? It's got a little holder on the side. You would rotate it X amount. So maybe it's, um, it's a third of a rotation. But just use your common sense when you do this. Okay, let me have a look here. Which saw, uh, okay, I have the same saw, Rick. Patrick's workshop. G'day, Patrick, how are you? The saw stop site store, yes. Are we going to address Dave's sharp haircut? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? I actually paid someone to do this. <laughs> no, I've got the same barber I've used him for years and years and years. And talking about hair, we're going to jump off the subject just for a second. 
You may notice in some of my earlier videos, around about six months ago, I was starting to get a ball patch on the back here. And it was a little bit concerning for me. I was a little bit concerned. You may have heard me make comment. Don't go looking at my ball patch. Anyway, Vicky put me on to a thing called collagen. Now collagen, you can get in pills. And I started taking it with the turmeric. because I get a, a turmeric, or turmeric, you want to call it turmeric, and collagen pill. It's a combination pill. Two a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. Collagen is very good for your skin, for your hair, and for your nails. Now here's the thing, I haven't cleaned my nails, so they don't look too hard. I used to get, the edge of my nails used to split, and it'd go down the side and I'd tear it off, and I'd always get infected, and it really, really hurt. It hasn't happened. It has not happened in the last three months. I'm over the moon. And also, the bald spot is disappearing. I could, you keep watching the videos and check for it. It's going. I, I said to the barber the other day, because normally he says, do you want me to make sure you've got a bit of hair going over the top of it to hide it? And I said, yeah, yeah. This time I said, I think it's disappearing. And he stood back like this. He was amazed, asked me what I was doing. So there you go. There's a tip for no cost at all. Next thing. Okay, here we go. Now the blades that I'm going to clean, I'll start with the big one first. This is my flay blade. And it's got, I don't know if you can see, it's got all this stuff, black stuff around there. On the teeth, it's not so bad, but on my aluminium blade, it is bad because it's almost, it's a negative pitch on the aluminium blade, which means for the um, uneducated, that the blade, instead of pointing forwards to cut, is actually one or two degrees back behind um, the, the um, what would you call it, the, from the center there out to there. Now there's a name for that. Um, it's not the tangent, not the... Uh, oh. Help me out guys, throw it in. Okay, so well, let's do this one first. Now I'm using this stuff. This is CTM Orange Tools uh, Formula 2050. Now why am I using this? The reason being, it's biodegradable and non-toxic, so I don't even need to wear gloves using this. If I wanted to make sure that my hands were nice and tidy all the time, well then, yeah, I'd wear gloves. But you don't need to. You spray it on, leave it for a little while, and leave it. And, and then don't wash it off with water, because it's actually going to give you a protective coat. And I'm also, I have an old toothbrush, and I'm going to use that just to dislodge any of the heavier stuff that doesn't want to move. And I've got a couple of pieces of particle board here that I can sit it on, all right? Now, I'm going to give it a bit of a spray. You don't need a hip. And then I'm gonna drop it into the holder. Now, one of the good things about putting it in the holder is all of that excess juice is gonna drop down into that channel. So I can now, I'm going to tip this down a little bit. Sorry, Zoe. I need to adjust that workshop sign around a little bit. So now I can rotate the blade this direction. I'll come down here a little bit lower. So I can rotate it in there. And it's going for a little pool. So I'm making sure, going through slowly, that it's getting it's going right the way around the blade. And then I can, if I want to, I can add to the pool on both sides. How cool is that? And I can see already the gunk coming out is being discolored from the resin that's on the blade. Now that's well and truly coated. So I'm gonna leave this one on there for a little while. And we're gonna have a look at that at the end of the show. Now, I've still got some stuff down in there. So I'm gonna put the Festool blade in there and turn it and coat it up. This saves you wasting all the product. Now I've seen other people on YouTube have dishes and I don't know how much product they pour in but I want this to last. You know, I'm not a millionaire. I just want to make sure that I get the blade coated. I'm going to put a bit more down in there. 
I'm going to tip that up ever so slightly. I've just gone too far. That's it. That should be okay. Just getting the bottom of the sign there for you, Zoe. All right. So tipping it, twisting again. Leave that there so you can see it. I've put a link in the description box here for you if you want. They do sell it at Carbotech in Australia. And also I put some links around the world on Amazon sites as well. And yes, I am an affiliate with the Amazon site. So you buy through that link. I'll get a dollar or something. You know, buy it through the Carbotech link. I haven't even put a link to Carbotech. Just go onto their website. I get nothing. <laughs> Honestly, they don't give me anything to do this. Um, here we go. So that's that's well coated. All right. I've got another blade here. This is a more aggressive. This is a fine cut blade from Festool. And I'm going to pull this one backwards through the pool. It's an easy, easy little thing to do, isn't it? Okay, Planty 3125, don't use oven cleaner. Anyone who's read that, um, oven cleaner can affect the bond of the carbide tips to the base metal on the blade. Not a good idea. I used to think also that um, <laughs> hair care tips. Luke, you don't need any hair care tips. You look like the Yeti. <laughs> All right. Um, and cross with Yosemite Sam. Uh, now this... Use, use a product that's designed to clean it. As I say, the oven cleaner is, is too aggressive. So please not. Don't work it. So simple. Oh, yeah, it's worth the wait. And a little bit more of a spray down there. And you can either keep this piece of wood for further down the track or throw it away or make a new one as soon as you, when you're ready to do the next one. How cool is that? There you go. Yeah, as I say, I'm not trying to be rude, but... I also used to think oven cleaner was a great idea. Have a look, have a look. See how it's starting to get to work on already? The color is coming up, it's starting to clean all the bits off. Now, router cutters. I've got a few here. I don't have a special system for doing these, but these are filthy as. And this one's had a whole, this one's had a bad life. And the big one inch. Now, I'm going to, I'm just gonna spray it straight onto these. Okay, nothing too hard about that. I've just sprayed it on. I'm going to lay it over on its side. This one here. Now, obviously, if you can get it on the inside of the cutter, this isn't going to affect the bearing either. So you can put on the bearing because a lot of time you'll get build up like this one has got on the bearing as well, which is going to make your cutter run up and down. It's not going to give you a great, great result. One more, which is this old, <laughs> this old red one. Non-toxic, as I say, industrial strength, biodegradable, all that kind of stuff, which makes me like it. Okay, now this one, you don't need to use anything after this. Do not wipe, do not, oh, sorry, do not uh, rinse off with water. Leave it on there. It's a protective coating. So I'm going to, as I say, go around with this. With this. Let's have a look. This one might be ready. Oh! Ha! Look at that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I don't want to drip it everywhere. But see these, these teeth at the top here, directly above where it says flay. They are super clean. You're not going to be able to see that on the, on the broadcast but they are fantastic. Okay, that's the quicker way. Now, obviously the, the buildup on the side of the blade isn't so much of a worry as on the front of the blade. I don't know how, they, how long they reckon you should leave it for, but this, this is what I'd suggest you do, just go around it to the other side. That's a huge difference. 
Look, have a look at these, these two blades here. This, this tooth and the next one. Not, I haven't scrubbed, this one I have. And it's so quick. How long has it been there? Five minutes? Oh. All right, so I'm going to put that down. I'm going to have a look at these router cutters. Let's have a look at this one. Beautiful. That dark spot was reflection only. And this is the one that I reckon was rubbish. Let's have a look. I'm gonna come in closer for this one. Okay, let's see if it's gonna focus on me. No, it's trying to focus on the thickness of down the back. There we go. No, I'll come over here. I was flicking stuff on my screen. Amazing. Not quite there yet. Very, very close. I'll bring it in closer for you to see. That was a stinker. I'm going to give it a little bit more and we'll hit it. We'll have a look at it at the end of the show. Because I'm curious and I'll put it over there now, haven't I? Because the router cutter's turning a whole lot faster. I'm probably prone to the stuff getting locked on but that that one came up in a couple of seconds this one as i say it's been there a long time i've never cleaned that cutter never had it sharpened and this guy here i'll just leave those there for the as i say till the end of the show and see how it looks lovely oh. <laughs> I gotta show you this one. That's the Festor blade. See the clean part? And the filthy bits beside it? So quick. So around here. Look at that. Amazing. Okay. I leave the CMT cleaner for about 10 minutes. Okay. Well, that's it's doing the job. All right, I'm gonna just rinse my hands off, but not those blades. And it's coming off easily. A little bit of soap. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> now, I'm guessing everyone wants to watch what's gonna happen with this thickness up. When I put the... Um, got to find my tea towel. I really do need to take this up and get it cleaned. Do you find that? You have a towel in the workshop and next thing you know you're, <laughs> you're cleaning stuff up. Glue off a joint or something like that. All right, Barry Doxy didn't think that. Okay, David, well, I've been wondering how well this product actually worked. Impressive. Think I'll go through a, t a ton of this cleanup. Um, yep. I... I like it, you know. So as I say, make that little cradle. It's dead easy. And if you wanted to, if you're finding you've really got a stubborn blade, you could leave it sitting in there and then rotate it possibly five rotations to do a full circle every five minutes. Just squirt a bit more down in there. I would look, at, because it's going to soak in, I would look at putting something underneath it. Possibly even do it a thicker piece of timber. Maybe turn this timber up sideways. Anyway, a couple of tips. Um, how's the bench going with it? It's going fine. It's going fine. Um, <laughs> okay, Derek. Uh, yeah, you don't, don't rinse them. Don't rinse them. Oh, I think in the workshop is fantastic. All right. So we've done. I'm going to mark some things off the list and get a quick drink of water. 
when I can find a pen that is there. It is. All right. NVN source stop um, blade cleaning demo done. The competition for the sign. Let's do John Lafferty's inventions next. Okay. Now we're doing some painting at the moment. <clears throat> you may notice that on Facebook and Instagram. Follow me if you if you haven't. Jump in, because it's not just carpentry. Sometimes it's very rarely carpentry. It's what's happening here. So at the moment we're repainting one of the buildings because it's been neglected for way too long and the weather boards were starting to cup. So we needed to make sure that we were protecting the, the boards. Otherwise, we're going to lose them. That's all there is to it. Now we're coming up to the windows very soon. Now Vicky asked me to buy a brass brush to clean the putty and the external molds, you know, like the beading around the windows because they're a colonial glazed window. John Lafferty has made this. That is a scraper and that is a carbide. Get it? This is a carbide helical head knife for a jointer or a thickness planer. It has four edges and the, he's printed the thread for the screw down the middle. He's got a little finger point there so it's comfortable to hold. And the back sits up a little bit so you're not going to hit your knuckles as you're dragging this along to clean the old paint off. How clever is that? Jump on his website, yellowboxshed.com.au and have a look at all the things that he's got there. He's, he's out of hospital, he's all fired up again, <laughs> and away he goes. All right, what's one of the other things he made? I thought I had some other things here. Give me a second, I'll see if I can find them. I'm pretty sure I've got them. Yep, here they are. Now John uses his 3D printer more than anyone else in the world, I think. See this. This is a hinge printed in one go. And you might say, well, that's fine. You know, it's, it's like a Lego land hinge. But look at this. Here's another one. It's a teeny weeny one. You could use that on a jewelry box. How cool is that? Okay. That's enough. That's enough for you, John. <laughs> so we've got all those. Now, here we go. Here's the part that everyone else is going to want to see. I'm going to bring the other camera over to here so we can see things close up. So give me a second. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't get to read too much of the chat. Every now and then again, oh, sorry, every now and then I will stop and have a bit of a look and see what I can see. I'm going to bring this over to here, going to switch the cameras around just for a second on this side so I can see what's happening. Yeah, why not? Here we go. I'll switch it over. There you go. Now, I have run this through the jointer. And the result is I have all of these different colors that have got different densities. And then down the end here, these ones have actually gone through the uh, belt sander. Uh, sorry, the drum sander. Now, it's left a hell of a pattern on there. These ones I've taken down to 240 grit, and then I went to 800 uh, velies or fleece. And... You know, you might look at them and say, well, Dave, I can't really see any color. Well, you <laughs> watch this. Oh, dear. I get a little bit of water on a rag. Now, you ready? Because at the moment, it's kind of scratched. It's got tiny, tiny, tiny scratches everywhere. When you start doing this stuff, it's like going to Juco or, or automotive um, painting. You really need to look after it. Watch this. So we've got those, we go down to these down here, even down to the clear. Now I'm going to run these the other side through the thicknesser. And down the side here, I've written on them what they are. You may not see those because that camera is not focusing all that well. So I'm going to tip this down, bring that in closer, spin this around and then down. And we might be able to see it a little bit better. Uh, 
Okay, down to this end, I'll hit it with the, the wet stuff again. And again, a bit more water. There you go, there she's popping. Look at that. And that's like when you put a finish on, that's how it's gonna come up. Down to the clear. See how clear that is. That is amazing. These are black, green, black, different amounts. Three drops, two drops, one drop of the yellow. And on the green, three drops, two drops, one drop. And on the red, three drops, two drops, one drop. And these are all gonna show when I, um, and that's the blue up here. You're not gonna see that terribly well because that's the one done with the drum sander. These are all gonna show better when I take the back off because you are to see straight through it. Let's do that now. Um, Nathan, I should be going to the Canberra show in November. I'm, my intention is to go to the Sydney and Canberra show. Uh, and I'll be taking my benches with me. So if you, I'll probably do a bit of a discount there and some will be at different stages of construction. So if, you, if you're hanging out and you want to save up for one, come and see me at the show. If you want one now, by all means, just jump in. Uh, stantonbench.com.au Flick me an email to uh, dave at stantonbench.com.au or just go to the website. Okay, would you sand that with wet and dry or simply put a finish on the colours? You can put a finish on, I think. Remember, I'm still only very new at this. So as I'm going through, you and I are learning together. So what I'm going to do is, that's 800. I've taken it to there. And doesn't that look beautiful? I'm going to take that up to 2,000 and possibly even 4,000. And then even then, I might go to the polishers as well, take it up to 11,000. The problem being, this is harder than the timber. So what will happen if I go too much more is... These will sit slightly proud and the timber will get sanded away in between because the so pine is a softwood. So if I was to use a hardwood, it would probably be a different story. Jessa Mesa, I am well, thank you. How are you? Right, let's go down to the thicknesser and I'll pop this guy on to the dust extraction port. And I've got power supply here as well. I'll make sure that I have all of the um, other ports turned off. I have one dust port I know is on. So that's over the top, over the top. Everything there is good. Open this one up, shut that one, and then come back up here. Again, um, I haven't done this with the thickness yet, so it might be a very quick demonstration. <laughs> and I might be turning the shelf and going to hospital, but we'll, <laughs> We'll have a look. Okay. I'll need to make sure that I'm not talking too loud. And we'll pull this back on. Microfiber. Yep, microfines, that'll do it. Make sure that I'm not going to take too much off in one pass. Um, unlock the machine. Lower the head down. That'll do me. Lock the head in position. Lock the wheels so it doesn't go rolling around the workshop. Turn on the dust extractor. There we go. Here we go. You excited? Ha! I get excited. I get excited at the silliest things. I just, I'm a tragic. Make sure I'm going the right direction as far as the grain's concerned. Being uh, finger jointed timber, that's all over the joint. Here we go. I think it's working. No, that distraction's not working. I haven't turned it off. Give me a sec. I've turned the wrong one on. I've got to open the other port. That's embarrassing. That's going to there, going down to there. 
that's all closed there. Coming down to here. Ah, oh. ha! It would help David if I opened the port here. There we go. Have you ever done that? Have you been going along going, why isn't it working? And then the dumbest thing, going like, I, I have to get someone in to sweep the floor. Here we go, put these back on. That's one pass, I'll show you. Okay, one pass, and we should be getting close. Nice sample board for the resin colors, did the same thing with Woodstock Putty Show. It's real life. <laughs> what do you do? All right, unlock the head, and down, half a turn, start her up. Another pass. Nearly there. the points of where the horseman bit has come through so we're very very close you can see it closer and closer I can see the colors coming through I didn't want to take too much of a pass off in one play, in one go, in case I hit the resin and I had all sorts of trouble. So I'm just going down slowly. We're nearly there. See them? Starting to come through. Spec savers, I should have these over. Even with the specs. That's getting it. Another pass, and I should be there. I love it. Now you can see the one drop of color to two drops, then three drops. Look at that. Now the thing is, that's just straight through the thicknesser. I'm not going to get, oh, it's just beautiful. All right, I'm going to get the rag and see if I can give it a wipe, both sides, and see if you can see straight through. Not wet enough. Oh, look at that. See the yellow? Let's do the greens next. And then the reds. 
And then the clear, the one everyone's going to be wanting to see. Well, it is extremely clear, except it's going to be cloudy because of, and the blues, because I haven't sanded them down to a finer grit yet. Now, if you want to know how clear the clear is, that's how clear it is. That's out of the bottom of one of these little dishes. Here, look, here's a dish here. I've left some in there on purpose. Now, this is another thing. When I mixed them up last week, I used a, a hard plastic uh, measuring cup. This time I've used squishy style and it's a whole lot better. Now watch this, crack it, there we go. That's the plug from the bottom. Now you're not gonna get much clearer than that. Look at it against my shirt. And that is a quarter of an inch thick, six mil at least. I see, I can see the screen easy. Can I clink? <laughs> and this is the light blue. That's one drop. And what else have we got? Oh, these were from the bottom when I had finished uh, one color and I dropped another color in there. Now I'm gonna show you something as well. On my garage floor, remember not long ago, maybe eight months ago, I ground the garage floor and coated it with an epoxy. Now the epoxy is yellow that I did that floor with. And I told everyone, it finishes yellow, that's all there is to it. They rely on you doing a thin coat so it looks clear before it gets to build up and actually show a color. This stuff is super clear. So I had a bit of a depression. I couldn't grind all the way down in one spot so I actually filled it with epoxy and it went yellow and I wasn't happy with it. So yesterday I got the Rotex out and I sanded that depression out. And <laughs> I, I mixed up some of this stuff and I think it was about 200 mil. And I put one drop of yellow. And remember that sample that I made here, one drop of yellow was um, in, in 25 mil. So I thought, oh, you know, one in 10 times Oh, it'll, it will hardly show. It'll just give it that little bit of tint, make it look like it's all the same. Well, didn't work. I'm going to show you what it looked like. I couldn't leave it there. I thought, you know, it's going to look like Barry's come in here and had a wee on the floor and run away. <laughs> so, so I, I dragged it. I got some a heap of paper towels and I mopped it all up. And then I did it with the clear just on its own, and it was absolutely beautiful. The good thing about this stuff is you can build it up. So this was 20, you can do this at 20 mil thick. And that's what I did. I did, there was about a 20 mil depression. I just said it was a huge hole. So it, it looks fantastic. Um, what else we got? What else? Let's go back to these uh, blades and see if how they're going. Oh, coming up well. nearly all the way there that one and this was the worst one this one was the absolute worst as I say just giving it a little bit more of a touch with the toothbrush that's there we go that blade was an absolute mess now I'm obviously going to have to hit it up with a little bit more product I'll do that now A little bit more brushing. Do you ever remember jingles from when you were a kid um, from TV? Remember the jingle for Ipana? Ipana toothpaste. Had a beaver. It was on the um, it was on TV as a kid. Brush up, brush up, brush up. <laughs> oh, I'm crazy. But I get these flashbacks just like the Colonel uh, Clink from uh, Hogan's Heroes. That's beautiful. That's so good. I'm very, very happy with it. What else have I got? I think that's about it, guys. I can have a bit of a chat down the side here for the next 10 minutes if you're interested. 
I'm gonna have a quick read down here. Hi Dave, if you put a clear epoxy coat from the, the color will pop. I'm sure it will, I'm sure, sure, sure it will. But the thing is you need to get it down so that um, I'm not gonna see any scratches in it. Now also for those interested, last week I asked people's opinion what I should do regarding the color. Now in here, all of these, they were 20 millimeter thick uh, that I poured at the bottom. Then six hours later, I think it was, while it was still tacky, I made up another batch and I topped them up to the top here, because this isn't, isn't even 40 mil thick, with clear. That's all I used. Now I've still got the color, but down the side, I could understand, some people said, do it with, do it with the color, Dave, make sure you do it with the color. I, so down the side here, I can look down there, I can see against the timber is green at the bottom, but up the top against the timber is clear. You'll see the timber, that's all there is to it. From this side, I see the green only against the timber, not the timber itself. So all of these things, they're fascinating to learn. Oh, one of the other things, you might be interested. This is the RTSC, this one. I just put a six inch fleece pad straight on it. This is a 180, sorry, this is an 800 aluminum oxide pad and it will fit right across. Obviously, it's only going to work in the center. So if you've got one of these little, um, what is it? It's a, I forget the size of the sheet, 100 by 80 or something like that, sander. And you've got a Rotex or a six inch sander as well. Grab one, because it they work fine. I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this while I've got some time, turn the dusty on. doing it I should really go through the, the grits like a normal person would let's see if that's making it pop I can still see the, the marks from the um, from the cutters but it does it does bring it up nicely beautiful okay I promise to do some reading and I will where are we um, Dave do you know if you change the blades let me slide back up to there. Do you know if you change blades on a Festool track saw with different teeth? No, it will not. Uh, they're all 2.2 millimeter wide um, kerf. So they will be fine. The only thing is if you're using one of the HKCs, the little HK55, it's got a 1.8 millimeter wide blade, 1.8 or 1.6. But anyway, it's narrower. So if you're using that all the time, on a track and then you go to one of the standard blades which is 2.2 yeah well it'll affect that I have noticed though if I switch if I tilt my TS55 over to 45 degrees it does stuff the, the splinter guard up and I'll have to replace that for the next cut if I go back to 90 degrees but for 45 there on that's how you do it if you're lucky enough to have a couple of tracks you could leave one set up with the 45 on it and then just use that every time you do a 45 and then back to the 90 degrees for the other track. Let me have a read. Um, okay, Gary, great scraper, John. Looks like a, a, a red tool company. All right, uh, that is for use if you use all Festool blades. Yeah, I think I've answered all of that for you. Um, it doesn't hurt the splinter guard. Barry, uh, Barry Doxy, Russ, should be okay as long as the blades are is the same kerf. Yes, correct. Um, John, is the epoxy hard? To the touch oh yeah it's hard it takes seven days for it to cure now this that is this particular brand now this i've got this is because this is what they sell where i work part-time i didn't have the interest to go looking and i just saw this there and i said to them you know what how about i grab some and i show people how this thing actually works because i'm curious myself i wanted to know how it worked and they said yeah don't, just grab some see how you go with it let us know what you think so to say thank you to them for, for letting me use it. I'm gonna take this down to the store 
and I'm going to drill a hole through the top here and I'm going to hang it in front of one of the windows down there so people near where they sell the epoxy so you can have a look at it make up your own mind I thought it was a pretty good deal um, need to make into light bar with lead lights great shows always think not a problem John my pleasure Ken uh, did you see my last message I didn't Ken if you can pop it up again thanks guys you're the best I want to get a rip blade for my track saw I was just concerned get the panther blade if you're going to get a blade for your for your TS55 make sure it's the panther I use the um, the standard blade which I think is a 40 tooth maybe a 24 or something 28 tooth something like that and I got a lot of burning when I was ripping with it the panther blade is a different story there's no burning with it you just it nearly cuts as quick as you can walk along with it that might be a bit of an exaggeration but it's, it's the difference is unbelievable all right where are we up to Ken I'm going to slide back up through here see if I can find where your question was it's probably going to be a heat I hope that's not your toothbrush out of your bathroom it is out of my bathroom and it used to be my toothbrush this now will live down here with this stuff I will find a little spot for it and it's going to hang out with that there we go um, yep brush it brush it brush it lost wits it was a Ipana fluoride plus and had a beaver um, and there was a the beaver was the good guy and there was someone else and he says the bad guy said I'm gonna drill holes in your big white teeth don't you remember these things from when you were a kid um, anyway <laughs> stuck in the head going back down through all of here uh, try eco epoxy it's made right here in Canada from soybeans no petrochemicals well this stuff has got no um... let me see I'm gonna have a quick read Okay, so it's got an environmental, ha environmental hazardous substance, UN3082, stating here, liquid NOS epoxy resin contains epoxy derivatives greater than 60%. Now, that's fine. I'm guessing a lot of these people are going to say it's got all of these things on here. They're going to tell you all of these warnings. Uh, but... I know I can't smell it when I'm using it. It's uh, it's not exothermic. I think well, I think that's the word for it. I don't think it will combust. When I cleaned up all that stuff that was in the garage, the, the 200 mil, I did put it with paper towels. I did put it in a bin and I took it outside for the night. I did not want it self-combusting in here, but there was no. It wasn't going to do it. It just didn't do it. All right. Um, if you pour the epoxy on glass, will it adhere? I don't know. It won't bond to this kind of plastic. Anything that's flexible will crack it and it'll break off. Um, how is the resin on thickness of blades regarding buildup? I don't know, Wayne. I'll have a look at that. I'll, I'll have a look inside. I'll do that right now. I'll disconnect the power because I don't want it to start up on me. I'll raise the head up. That's an interesting question. I don't think you're going to have anything building up on it. But maybe. Have a look in the back. I see nothing on them. I see nothing. Come around to the other side. Jeez, uh, I know nothing. <laughs> they look pretty clean. Because I can see... It may actually help to clean it, Wayne. You never can tell. I can see the tips of the blades on their downwards as they're coming in to do the cut. And they're as clean as a whistle. So I don't know. Um, the Panther blade might be a wider curve. No, they're all 2.2 millimeters. They're all made by Festool, specifically for the track. Um, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Um, wow, a heap of people. Uh, Mega epoxy has a very long open time. Depends what you are looking to do with it. Uh, Rick, no, same. Yes. Can you buy universal riving knife from anywhere? 
I think uh, Microjig makes something. Have a look at that. Uh, Dave Lucy, I see a new challenge for John, a holder for toothbrushes that clips to the side of the bottles. Uh, Lost Wits, 34. I only know I pan a toothpaste because it had a jingle during the Grease movie. JJ, you should get a kickback from Carbotech. I'm sure everyone here has spent thousands there from watching you. Look, I work down there a few days a week and I get given a little bit of stuff like this. They gave me this to because I said, you know, I want something for the show. I've got someone asking about cleaner. Is it any good? I show you it in use and you see for yourself how good it is. The uh, epoxy, they gave me that as well. You know, why not? You know, if you guys are interested, this is like a product demonstration. You do not have to buy this stuff. You can buy it from anywhere else, but you're learning at the same time as I'm going through. I'm learning about it as well. So I'm over the moon that they've given me this stuff to play with and show you guys at the same time. What is the next thing? Uh, TV, I am showing my TV. <laughs> next we'll be reminiscing over when... cut. I remember the day when TV color was on. I remember the day they turned Channel 10 on. I was at school. We only had three stations. We had nine seven and abc and then channel 10 came along amazing um ground i've got a panther blade in front of me 2.6 millimeter kerf well, that's a challenge that's a challenge let me have a look because if i'm wrong i will admit it straight away i um i will check panther blade panther blade where where are you where are you there it is Panther. Sorry, buddy. 2.2 millimeters. Here it is. Read it for yourselves. 2.2 by 20 millimeter arbor. Panther on the side there. You can see him leaping. Hate to call you on that one, but I'm right. It depends on whether it's a TS55 or a TS70 or an 85. So there you go. I'm pretty sure the question was all about the TS-55. Correct me if I'm wrong, Russ, but uh, the same goes anyway. If you're using that one saw on the track, but different blades in that saw that are built for that saw, no change. Okay. All right, where are we up to? Could be an older one. Sorry, Dave, uh, for TS-75. Yeah, okay, so that, as I said, that, that, that's why. All right, Dave, the clear coat will fill in the scratches and they disappear. I've sounded with 180 grit. Have they, Trev? See, this is all what I really like. I like to get this feedback. Now, TS-55, you'll be fine. You'll be, and the 75, you're using the 75 on the track, it'll remain the same. Here we go. End of the show. Thank you, everyone, for coming in and watching. Um, it's been fun, you know, as I say, I discover things at the same time as I'm letting you guys know. Um, the competition, I want to see those emails of the sign in your workshop. I need them. Send them in to me and uh, I will pop them up next week. And as I say, I'll number them. I'll put them in a slideshow. Get them to me as early as you can, please, because I, I don't like it right at the end of the week, Sunday morning, while I'm trying to get the show together, all of these emails start piling up. I, I, I get swamped. So get them in as quick as you can. This afternoon, take a photo. Do it straight after the show. All right, I think that's going to be about it. I'm having a look down the side here. One thing, one thing left to go. Here we go. This is John Lafferty is, I told you, he's a thinker. But I tell you, it's pulled a pepper grinder to bits, put a CXS on the end for getting a lot of work done. I hope he hasn't been using that on his steak. No wonder your kidneys are stuffed, John. Oh, I don't know. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Scrolling text and all of that kind of stuff. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Have a great week. Look after yourselves. Be nice to each other. And I shall see you next week. Bye.